Hey, what's up guys and gals, Muzzafuzza here, and today I'm bringing you some more Call of Duty gameplay commentary, but potentially today I'm going to open up uh, kind of a big can of worms, uh, something that most people don't really talk about. I'm going to try to draw some comparisons and contrasts um, just to try to paint a, a bigger picture and so that you guys can wrap your head around uh, the way that I'm seeing things and just kind of present a concept to you guys. So here goes nothing. This is going to be uh, where gaming stands. And what I mean by that is like where gaming stands in the grand scheme of things um, in relation to business, industry, uh, consumerism, um, what people are willing to pay for with both their money and their time and just their attention, like what they're, what they're paying attention to um, and how gaming fits into all of that. So uh, yeah, this is Muzzafuzza. Don't really have much to say about the gameplay. Um, this is Black Ops 2. So if you enjoy good old fashioned TDM, uh, this is some robot cyborg camo, uh, MMS, whatever the, the millimeter scanner, the one that you can see through walls, the wall hacks, bro. I'm wall hacking all over the place. Um, but I, I don't really want to talk about the gameplay, like I said. So, uh, I don't really know how to break into this topic. I'm just going to try to jump into it. I suppose the first thing that I should bring up is about money. Uh, as you guys know, I'm not very, I'm not all about the Benjamins. I'm not all about the business. I'm not trying to sell my soul by any means. Uh, but I have been to a few industry-related events, and I've seen the growth of gaming over the past th few years just with next-gen consoles and uh, the progression from game to game and how PC gaming has been getting bigger every year and things like this. And, and also just seeing it grow on YouTube, seeing it grow uh, as far as like an online presence of people who are willing to watch other people play video games. Um, they do it on, on Twitch TV with live streams. They do it on YouTube with videos. And uh, there, there are potentially, like, there's the potential for more and more different mediums and, you know, TV shows or Hulu or Netflix or whatever. The, the possibilities are endless. Uh, and people are coming up with new stuff all the time. There's always new startup companies trying to be the next big thing, the next big app, the next big game, uh, so on and so forth. So to get back to the topic of the greenbacks, the Benjamins, the dollar dollar bills, y'all, uh, video games are set to be over a hundred billion dollar industry in the next few years. I think it went from like one year it was only five billion, and the next year it was like nine point something billion, and the next year it was twenty five billion, and it's just going to exponentially keep growing uh, as, as a market, and it's a bigger market than movies, TV shows, or books. Video games sell a lot better than all of those things, so people make tons of money on video games. Look at Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird was making $50,000 a day before he shut it down, and the reason he shut it down is because he said it, he made too addictive of a product, and he felt like he was having like a negative impact with that product, so he ripped it off the shelves because he thought he was, you know, making little Flappy Bird crack addicts. Um... <laughs> Just to try to give you another comparison, basically video game companies are going to be taking in as much revenue over the next 10 years as car companies, energy companies, meaning oil and gas, um, also retail companies, commodity companies, uh, electronics companies like Apple and Microsoft. Video games are going to make just as much money and basically, I mean, it's a piece of art. At the end of the day, the video game that they create is a piece of art just like a movie, a book, or a TV show. Um, or a YouTube video, I guess some would say. So let's go down this rabbit hole and dive even deeper. Um, when you're buying a video game, when you're making that decision whether or not you want to shell out 60 bucks, which is the, the price for a AAA game, uh, you're deciding to pay a good chunk of money. 60 bucks is a, a lot of money in, in regards to buying one product, uh, which is really, at, at its core, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros. You're just buying a file that can be downloaded onto any device, a computer, a smartphone, a, a console, um, and you're paying for the experience that you're going to get out of that game, and hopefully you're going to put a lot of hours into that game so that will, in return, make it feel like it was worth your while. Everybody knows that feeling when you buy a game and you just don't get what you wanted out of it, and you're just like, meh, probably, probably shouldn't have bought that game. And That's the main goal of, of any game company. They want you to make that initial purchase and then continue making purchases within the game itself, and if you want to go even deeper, and this is to the dark crevices of gaming that I, I really don't like talking about because this kind of stuff gets me fired up, but it's, it's what I'm passionate about so I might as well give my opinions on it uh, microtransactions and downloadable content DLC that stuff is going to just get bigger and bigger and bigger every year and there's nothing you can do about it people are way too obsessed with customizing their character customizing their avatar buying all the different costumes and hats and stuff that you can get within each individual game because they want that custom feel like like they can relate to the character um, 
that that's how they get you. That's how the companies really get you to spend your money. Uh, it's it's with League of Legends skins. It's with uh, any DLC packs that come out for for name name the game. Every game has DLC nowadays. Um, and really, they're just printing money. They're just selling you files that they could have originally put on the game uh, in the original sale, but they decided to stretch out a downloadable content plan over a certain time allotment uh, to keep their player base interested and to constantly have new content coming out for you uh, on, a, on a month-to-month basis. And with Call of Duty uh, Elite, they were trying to like do different things. They were going to do you know, a map pack uh, every three months, and then they changed it to uh, a new map pack or a new weapon pack or whatever, or a new camo. Camo, is, it's always about camos. It's always about aesthetics and how things look. Um, they try to like go from month to month to get you to keep shelling out five bucks, ten bucks, whatever it is. And uh, with systems like Microsoft Points or Riot Points or whatever you want to call it, they can just, you know, just keep taxing you. They can just keep taxing you out of more and more money. And that's that's the that's the way it's heading. That's the way things are going to keep heading because they know that that's an easy way to basically print money by the billions. And I'm still undecided. I think I'm still on the fence in regards to whether or not this is an immoral thing or whether or not you can even blame a developer or a publisher for making the decision to sell DLC and, and microtransactions because if they didn't, then they wouldn't have all that money. They wouldn't have all that revenue to both pay their employees and grow their companies and, and make their businesses bigger and make bigger and better games. So I don't know. I don't really have a point to make on whether or not it's a good or evil thing or it's a black and white issue. I think it's a gray area and it's something that we're just going to have to deal with. Uh, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. So tweet me or Facebook me or leave a comment down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like. Check out all my links down below in the description. Follow my live stream, etc. And uh, thanks for watching. This has been Muzzafuzza and I will see you guys uh, in the next one.